ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ I'm going to go through our history our background talk about where this concept of raj comes from sikhanda raj kithon aaya i'm going to start off by guru nanak dev ji maharaj in our itihas is very clear that guru maharaj they don't live in a city the other people set up they set up their own city kartarpur and utthe maharaj starts to set up a sikh community they start in the evening there's kirtan there's rara sahib there's aarti pai gurdas is talking about the mahol at gurdas uh, uh, um akartarpur and they start to talk about this amazing place that maharaj built prasasan ji ek chiz dia dakhna maharaj was the king of kartarpur they ruled there if there was any kind of problem any kind of dispute obviously in any city in any place there's disputes among the community and they would come to our guru to resolve that so our guru starts to become a king of that area and in gurbani we say sachche padsha sachche padsha means the king of this world and the king of the next world spiritual and temporal king meeri peeri so it started there and in gurbani what you've got is satyan balavan saying very clearly ki nanak raj chalaya ਸੱਚ ਕੋਟ ਸਤਾਨੀ ਨੀਵ ਦੇ ਤੇ ਨਾਨਕ ਇਸ ਤਾਂ ਇਹ ਕਿੰਗਡਮ ਗੁਰੂ ਨਾਨਕ ਜੀ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਐਂਡ ਦੈਟ ਟਰੂਥ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਫਾਊਂਡੇਸ਼ਨ ਦੈਟ ਹੀ ਪਲੇਸਡ ਇਨ ਆਈ ਦ ਟਰੂਥ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਹੂ ਵੀ ਆਰ ਐਜ਼ ਹਿਊਮਨ ਬੀਇੰਗਸ ਐਂਡ ਵਾਟ ਇਜ਼ ਲਾਈਫ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਮੋਰ ਇੰਪੋਰਟੈਂਟਲੀ ਵੇਅਰ ਇਜ਼ ਦ ਟਰੂਥ ਕਮਿੰਗ ਫਰਮ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਇਜ਼ ਸੇਇੰਗ ਵੈਰੀ ਕਲੀਅਰ ਦ ਟਰੂਥ ਇਜ਼ ਕਮਿੰਗ ਸਟ੍ਰੇਟ ਫਰਮ ਵਾਹਿ ਗੁਰੂ ਗੁਰੂ ਨਾਨਕ ਜੀ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਡਸ ਨਾਟ ਹੈਵ ਅ ਗੁਰੂ ਔਨ ਥਿਸ ਵਰਲਡ ਦੇ ਦੇਮ ਸੈਲਫ ਸੇ ਦੈਟ ਮਾਈ ਗੁਰੂ ਇਜ਼ ਵਾਹਿ ਗੁਰੂ in in janam sah ki itihas it says that maharaj went in front of guru of akal purak and hukum e hoya that you are gur parmeshwar and akal purak is par brahm parmeshwar so where is this truth coming from from wahiguru mana se jaisi main aave khasam ki bani tasra kari gyan ve lalo the same bani coming from wahiguru they are making it known to us and even the way that they act is very independent when they go in front of babar they call him jabar to his face but sometimes people think chalo gunwale ji mara jidda what about the rest of the gurus so we're going to go through each guru guru angad dev ji maharaj they set up a town as well called khadur sahib again not something that existed something they set up and it becomes a main gurdwara another city for the six not only there they set up wrestling as well khadur sahib which this akara sa gurdwara is it unusual in those days for a sadhu to start a wrestling akara guru sahib is showing already that the meeri peeri idea the physical and the spiritual is already inside sikhi guru amar das ji maharaj they built another shahar kor goindwal sahib that becomes a third center for six of those times again cities are related to the guru where the six can live together saath sangat ban gayi If you sh- lacking sangat you make your own town the whole town is your sangat also guru amar das ji maharaj meets the king of the time called akbar akbar is very impressed with guru amar das ji maharaj he says maharaj i'll give you a jagir i'll give you some land you can live off the money of that land mara says no thanks we don't want to live off your money sa sang ji maya this is how kings this is how rulers control you they control you with money they control you with threats mara says no thanks i don't want your money akbar although he so impressed he wants to do something mara just want his money on his land so he says to maharaj okay all your sikhs don't have to pay taxes se kan fir tax free hona aata sega but still mara didn't take money off him and in a way they didn't give him any money either the sikhs then gave him any taxes but what's interesting is guru maharaj has up 22 manjis to do prachar but the mughal kingdom was divided into 22 manjis bai manjiyan the mara set up the mughal kingdom was divided into 22 administrative sections mara set up 22 administrative sections it's like a parallel kingdom jithe mughal raj othe sikhan da raj guru ram das ji maharaj 
they set up Ram Daspur, which becomes uh, later on into Amritsar, another town. So again, the gurus are starting to set up. Every guru is doing something which is different, something which is more independent-minded. Also, obviously, with Guru Angad Dev Ji Maharaj, is the Gurmukhi alphabet. They set up a separate Gurmukhi alphabet, which wasn't existing before. Again, dividing a line between Sikhi and what's there already. A new thing has come along. It's got its own language. And then obviously the conclusion of that is with Guru Angad Dej, Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj, the fifth Padshah, when they set up Ad Granth. Adi Granth is a completely new concept, a new Granth for the whole Sikh Panth. Guru Arjan Dev Ji Padshah writes more than half of Adi Granth themselves. A lot of Bani is written by Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj. Nearly half of Guru Granth Sahib Ji is by them. And then arranging it in such a way, there's no such Granth in India. No such grant that has got different people's writings inside it. It was a very bold thing at that time. But they say to the Sikhs, now bow down to this grant. Baba Buddha Ji is the head granthi, and the Sikhs are coming into Harimandar Sahib and Matha taking to Ad Granth Sahib. A big change in their mentality. Going further with Guru Ji Maharaj, on Ang 73 of Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj in Siri Rag, Guru Arjan Dev Ji themselves, they write a Shabad talking about Raj. Talking about what is it, what are they trying to make. Look, they've made these towns. In every town, the Guru is the king. Kartarpur, Kadur Sahib, Goindwal Sahib. Then, Amritsar. In all these towns, the Guru is the king. And in that place, as the Raja, what is the Mahal? They start talking about this Mahal. And why have they created this environment? Mara says, Hun hukam hoa meherwanada. They say now the order has come from Wahiguru. They say that Wahiguru has made a hukam upon me. What is his hukam? They go, <coughs> They say no one is here now to No one is now to trouble anybody else. It's a place where no one will be persecuted. This is Akal Puruk's hukam to create a place where no one is persecuted because the Guru is in charge. And then they say even further, Sab sukhali vuthiya, eh hoa hale miraj jiyo. They go, everybody's living in peace, and this is a hale miraj, a compassionate kingdom. They say, I've been put into charge, God's hukum has come, that you, as a guru, must set up a hale miraj, a place of compassion, where you're in charge, and no one is being persecuted, and everybody lives in peace. Look at the names, Kartarpur. Yeah? Mara Singh is a place made of Vaheguru, Amrit Sar. The place of Amrit. So again, Guru Sahib also, Guru Andeji Padshah, they get involved in politics. At that time, when um, Akbar had passed away, Jahangir and Khusro, they were two brothers. And Khusro and Jahangir, they were fighting for the throne of their father. And Guru, uh, uh, Guru Sahib, Guru Andeji Maharaj, they saw that Khusro has got more gun than Jahangir. So they said to uh, Khusro, I bless you. When Jahangir actually ended up winning, then he turned against Guru Maharaj. And that was one of the things that counted when uh, Jahangir was thinking about, um, obviously, Shahidi of Guru Andeji Padsha. The Guru Maharaj had got involved in politics. So they never stay separate from the worldly matters. Going further, when Guru Maharaj is becoming Shaheed, at that time, when they're in Lahore and they're being tortured, they go for Ishnan right at the very end. At that time, there's us, us vele, Guru Sahib, they bilkul lage, panj six again. There was five Hazuri six that were with Guru Andhya Ji Padshah. Maharaj ne onan hukum ditta, <coughs> ki go and tell my son Har Gobind, now he's going to be the Guru. He needs to sit on his throne with swords and needs to be armed. Sena rakhi. So that hukum was delivered by Baba Bidhi Chand, who was there at the Shahidi of Guru Andhya Ji Padshah. And he went and told, a young Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji Maharaj, that your father has given his hukum for you. And then obviously Guru Hargobind Sahib Pasha, the sixth Guru, sets up Akal Tak Sahib. They set up a throne. Sasang Ji, Kadavichna, Akal Tak Sahib is higher than the Dili Takht. The same word they use, Takht. Dili Takht is a Mughal throne, and Maharaj makes Akal Takht, which is higher than Dili Takht. It's a symbol. Is showing people that the throne of God. Maharaj sits on this throne of God. They carry Kirpans. They carry Shastar. They wear the, the star. 
and they also set up an army, the Akal Sena. You can see all of this is growing now. Slowly, slowly, what Maharaj exactly was Satyan Balwanda saying, Ki Nanak Raj Chalaya, Satya Kod Satani Nivde. They made a foundation of truth and the kingdom is started, but every Guru is adding upon this Raj, upon this manzil of this house. And Guru Harkobin Sahib Maharaj, they are armed at all times, they have horses, they have guards, they have royal clothing. And then they have four battles. Not only do they have an army, but the army gets in one battles and they fight and they win all four battles. So Guru Harkobin Sahib Maharaj is not just an accomplished um, Guru, but they're also an accomplished warrior and a military leader. And at that time, the people are writing that the Guru Sahib has got a state within a state. That within the Mughal Raj, there is another Raj of Guru Har Gobind Sahib Maharaj. Then Guru Har Rai Sahib Ji, people think, well, did they do something? They did. Guru Har Rai Sahib Ji Maharaj, they got involved in politics. First, they gave medicine to Dara Shiko, who is the son of Shah Jahan. They could have said, I don't want to get involved in politics. They gave medicine. But when Shah Jahan passed away and Aurangzeb wanted to kill his older brother and become the king, then Dara Shiko came to Guru, Guru Sahib and asked for a var as well. Maharaj blessed him as well at that time. And Aurangzeb got very annoyed with this, that Guru Hara Sahib Ji has got involved in politics and blessed his brother, that they called Maharaj to come to Delhi. Maharaj says, I won't go. I'm not coming to meet you. He sends a emissary saying, you are ordered to come to Delhi. Maharaj says, you can't order me to go anyway. I'm not going. Aapni gai, they sent their son, Ram Rai Nupesta. And when Ram Rai starts to fall and get attracted to that power of the Delhi Kingdom, starts to do change Bani, then Maharaj says, Tere kade nahi And they kick out their own son for breaking the rules of Sikhi, for changing Gurbani. They don't behave like a subject, they behave like an independent sovereign. Was Guru Sahib adheen to anybody? Were they ever listening to anybody else? No, they acted how they wanted to act. Adheen hondai when you're under somebody. Maharaj says, I'm not adheen de sutantar, independent. As we go further, Guru Har Rai Sahib Ji then gives a hukam to their son, Guru Har Krishan Sahib Ji. And they say that you are not to go and meet Aurangzeb. Milani or Muni Lagna. Now Aurangzeb is very desperate to meet the Guru, Guru Har Krishan Sahib Ji. He does so many bainti Maharaj doesn't go. Then Raja Jai Singh of Delhi, he thinks, well, let me ask Guru Sahib to come to Delhi anyway. So Guru Sahib goes to Delhi, stays with Raja Jai Singh, what, where we now call uh, Bangla Sahib Maharaj. But Maharaj does not meet with Aurangzeb. Mil deni kade. Again, behaving like an independent person. When Maharaj Guru uh, uh, Tegh Bharati Maharaj becomes a Guru, then at that point, they go to a place in Punjab where one of the kings that was freed by Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji, the Bhavanjay Raja, one of them, they go to him to meet him. And he says to Maharaj, I'm very dukhi. I haven't got a child. Maharaj blesses him and says that you will have a child. And on his nishani, on his matha, there will be a nishani of me. And there was a little, on the child, was a little nishani of Ikko Ankar on his matha. So Raja Ram Singh, he was blessed with a son. Now what happened is that the wife of Raja Ram Singh was so happy with this getting this blessing of the son that she said to Maharaj, because Maharaj was admiring this land around there, beautiful in the hills, and they said, Ki Maharaj said that I, li I like this area. She said, take it, take as much as you want. Maharaj says, I won't take it of you, I'll buy it of you. Again, when you take something of somebody else, then you owe them, then you become underneath them. Maharaj says, no, I'll trade, I'll pay you money for this land. That land became Chakananiki, which later on became Anandpur Sahib, and which, which is now Atakht Keskar Sahib. So again, Guru Sahib does not behave like anybody else, like a beggar. They behave like a king, they behave like a sovereign. Then also, Maharaj goes to Assam, where there's two kings having a bit of an argument amongst each other, and they go and resolve that as an intermediary. Again, in getting involved in politics. The biggest thing they did, that we all know them for, is Thikar Por Dilisir. Prapur Kiya Peyan, Tegh Bahadur Si Kriya, Karina Kinhu Aan, Tegh Bahadur Ke Chalat Payo Jagat Ko Sok, Hai 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 Sab Jag Payo, Jai 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 Surlok. When Guru Maharaj 
intervenes in the politics of the land. When the Hindus come and ask them for help, Maharaj comes up and says, no problem, I will step forward. Obviously, we know the story of Guru Gobi Singh Ji Maharaj sending their father forward. But Sahasaka Ji, how are they behaving? Are they behaving like a sadhu? Are they behaving like somebody who is adheen? Or are they behaving like a king, like a raja? You can see that Sikhi has always been of the Guru's making. Miri Piri has always been part of our very makeup. So Guru Maharaj then goes to Delhi. They challenge the king. They get involved in politics and they become Shaheed right there in Delhi for the sake of somebody else's religion, for the sake of somebody else's freedom to practice their own religion. Then we get to Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. Obviously, there's loads of things. But to start with, Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj in Bani explains their own mission. In Bachitra Natak Granth, Maharaj starts saying, they say, Main, that what Kaal Purakh has told me, this Bachin, a hukum hoya Kaal Purakh da, ki, Main apna sut tohe nivaja, Pant parchur karbe kau saja, Jahe taha te taram chalaye, Kabud karante loh hataye. They say, God said to me, that I've made you my son. I've made you my son, go into this world and spread this Pant. This Pant means this way. They say, go and spread this way of Sikhi and wherever you go, set up Taram. Taram means justice and righteousness. Jahe taha te taram chalaye, kabud karante log hataye. Stop people from doing the wrong things. Stop people from doing the wrong things, which is basically intervene in politics. When people are being persecuted, where kings are doing the wrong thing, then get involved. Exactly what Guru Gobind Singh Ji says, ki hum ek aaj taram, uh, taram jagat mo aaye. Taram het Gurdev Patahi. They, they sent me upon this world for Taram. Yeah? They go in, they're going to destroy the bad doers and protect the saints. That is what our Taram is. Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj, when they're only about 16, 17 years old, they're married, their wife is heavily pregnant, they're living around Ponta Sahib, and they have, they're composing poetry, Akal Ustad Sahib. Job Sahib, all these Bani are being composed in this beautiful land but they get their army getting bigger and bigger and the local hill Rajas, they get more and more annoyed. There was a Raja called Peem Chand as well. He wanted the Prashadi Hathi that Maharaj had. The Maharaj had been gifted a Hathi by that son that had been born by Guru Tegh Bharati Maharaj's own blessing. That son had grown up and he trained an elephant that could Matha take and he could do Chor Sahib. A white hati. He blessed this to Guru Sahib. He's gifted it to Guru Sahib. And Raja Peem Chand, he wanted this. Uh, sorry, this elephant. And Mara says, you can't force me to give you something. Had you asked me for it, I might have given it to you. But he tried to force Guru Maharaj. Then all these Rajas, they wrote a letter to Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. They're only about 60, 17 years old. Sahib. They might have thought he was a bit of a, you know, a whippersnapper. Getting too big for his boots. They wrote a letter to Maharaj. And they said, you got three choices. They got ready with their army and they came to scare Guru Maharaj. They came with their army, they wrote a letter, they said in this letter, the king said to Guru Maharaj, you got three options. Either you leave this place of Ponta Sahib, go. Or you pay your tax, <laughs> you give us money for staying here. Or we're going to attack you. And what does uh, Kabi Sanapat say about this time? He writes a Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj, they listen to it, they go, Sunat Abad, Satgur Guru Sahib heard the, uh, the girl in this letter. They say, Ko payo man mahe. And they, both josh aya. they go angry. Who are these people? What are they saying to me? They say, Raj Tej do bane. These two things, Raj and Tej, they go together. Teh saman ko na hai. They go, it's nothing compared to both things together. What are they saying? You need two things. Raj and Tej. Tej means power, strength. And Raj means sovereignty. They say two things are needed and nothing can come against them. So they go, well now it's time to fight. Maharaj says that at that time, well I'm not going to walk away. And I'm not going to bend down. They actually say even further, they go, no one respects a fool. The word they use is a mood and a gyan. Somebody who is a janan and somebody who is mood, they go, no one respects that person. So Sanji, Socho, Guruji is giving us teachings. If we behave like idiots, no one will respect us. Everything we do, we must be careful. Does it fit in with Guru Sahib Sutantar ideology? Or are we bending ourselves at the knee at the wrong place? 
and then people lose their respect for us. So hoya ki, Mara said, let's go then, it's time for battle. And oh jitte, and we know the Shabbat, when they go, Pai jeet meri, kripa kaal keri. That's what happened in the battle of Pangani. And Guru Mara themselves, their son was born the same day on their battle. And they talk about in the name of Ajit, because their son would never be beaten. Going further, Maras says the six, Ki sikho shastar kyo juri hai And this Bani, it's important to understand, it's talking about what is power. Because shastar is in the hand of the six. Maras says, uh, in the Janam Sakhi, it comes out like this, Ki tam in baniyo garib nivaj, shastran ke adeen hai raj. The Guru Sahib spoke like this, he's garib nivaj, that only you can rule if you have shastar. You cannot rule as somebody who is unarmed. You must be armed. And exactly what you see in 1699, where Guru Gobind Singh sets up an army called the Guru Khalsa Panth, the Akal Puruk Ki Fauj. When they set up this army, they give it Shastra as one of its basic principles, that it must be armed at all times. Then they tell the Khalsa, you will rule. Raj Karega Khalsa. The Raj they're talking about, when they give you a Shastra, Ki Shastra Ki Adeen Hai Raj, they say also, to see Raj Karoge, you will rule. You will not be ruled over, you will rule. Thada Raj Adheen Kede Hovega, you will not be Adheen to anybody else, but because you will have Shastar, then you will Raj. Because Raj is underneath that weapon. And also, Mara says, ki they were thinking about who should rule the world after they go. And they say, go, in Grief Sikhon, ko Diyu Padshahi. I've given these six. The rule. Now that I'm leaving, whatever would, was my job to be such a Padsha, the Khalsa gets that job now, to be the king of the world. Also, they gave the Khalsa some teachings about the world. I'm going to go through two of them. They're very common. Mara says that Raj bina nahi taram chale hai. You want to set up taram? What Guru Gobind Singh's own hukum was, ki jahe taha te taram chalaye. Mara says, you can't do that. Raj bina nahi taram chale hai. And he said, taram bina sab dalle male hai. Everything is ruined if you're not got taram. The hukam is to do taram, but the only way to get taram is to have raj. Otherwise, he will take it away from you. They go even further and they explain to the Sikhs, how does one get raj then? Raj give him manuga. You want taram, you need to have raj. You want raj, how will you get raj? Mara says, Koi kisi ko raj na de hai. No one gives you raj. Jo le hai, so nij bal se le hai. Those who take it, they take it with their own strength. But la asonu milna ni raj. People sometimes do speeches, they go, asi khasa raj, sanu khasa raj miluga. Milna ni, sanu lena pavega. That's the only way you can rule when you take it off somebody else. And the only way to take it off somebody else is with your nij bal. Nij means your personal, bal means your strength. Nijbal, your personal strength. How strong you are determines how much of a ruler you become. Raj and Tej, they go together. So, Sahasanga Ji, what does Bani say about this? What kind of strength do we need? Now, if you want to get this Raj, Mara says, Ki, in their Bani they say, Tumhe shard koi avar na te aon, Jo bar chaon, so tum te paon. They go, let me not look to anybody else. Whatever I want, let me get it from you, my Guru. So as a Sikh, our only way to get what we want is to go through our Guru. We don't want to ask anybody else. We're Sutantar, we're only Adheen of our Guru. But then Guru Gobind Singh is telling us, if you want that Tej, if you want that power that I have in my hand, then I'll give it to you, but they give a restriction. They give a slight um, context to that. What do they say? They say, Jab lag khalsa rahe niara, tab lag tej diyu mein sara. You want this Tej and the Raj, I'll give it to you. But you have to remain independent. You can't be under anybody else. You can't be changing your mentality as well. You've got to be thinking independently. I'll give you all my Tej. They say if they go the way of the people, the pundits of this world, selling Bani, trading, making it all about rituals, Mara says, I'll give you all my Tej. I will not have any faith in you then. So Sangha Ji, we can say Raj Karega Khalsa, 
But Raj and Tej go together. And if you haven't got the Tej, we can't have the Raj. And the only way to get that Tej is by being Niyara and staying independent and following our Guru's Hukam. There's a time in Anandapur Sahib when the six are surrounded. Six are surrounded at that time. <coughs> and we don't hear about this sometimes. <coughs> but when there was no food, no water, they would send raiding parties out to go and raid the Mughals outside. The six inside Anandapur Sahib, they would get together in groups and go out and raid the Mughals and bring their food back inside for the six to eat inside. And it got so bad that at one point, when you send out four people to raid, only two would come back alive. It was like virtue suicide to go outside and get that. Once they went and no one came back alive, they all got shaheed. But that time Guruji hadn't given a hukam for them to go out. So Guru Gobi Singh Ji in Kavi Sanapad talks about it. He goes, Maharaj, they said, Pina hukam kyon gai? Oh, I didn't give the hukam for them to go. Why did they go? Sikh kende sare shaheed hoge. Mark ne chalo. Fir bhi. They fought on the battlefield and died. Onon mukti hai. At least they died fighting on the battlefield. The thing we said at the beginning. Ki Mara says. Chhatri ko puto. Bamin ko na hai. This bipran ki reet is bamin ki reet. It's the way of the Brahmins. Mara says chhatri ko puto. Bamin ko na. I'm the son of a warrior. I'm not the son of a Brahmin. Kya tapat aavat ho jo karo. I don't know any of this stuff that you're talking about to please God through some kind of ritual worship. They go, no. They go, what kind of world should I leave your charan and think about the worldly ways? They say, no. no neither will I look at the Pandit ways, neither will I look at the worldly ways. I look straight at you. And they go, ke deho humko. Be happy with me. Give me this one thing. The thing that I'm holding my hands together and asking for, what is that thing? When it's time for me to die, let me die on the battlefield as a warrior. Guru Maharaj is telling us that you know what, you're not going to get this Raj unless you take it with your own strength. Sangaji, what do we need for that? First, we need to take back our independent thinking. Our mind itself is not free. Our mind itself is trapped. We keep thinking the wrong things, therefore we keep going the wrong way. In Jabji Sahib, Maharaj says you need a Shubh Icha and you need Shubh Vichar. Shubh Icha is we want to go close to Waheguru. And the Vichar is by becoming smaller, by getting humility. So you need the right thinking and the right desire together. If you want to be independent, we have this right desire. Khalsa Raj Hovega, Tabe Khalsa, Ode Astalo Dita. To be winning from east to west, to be the Jagat Guru, the king of this world, to do that desire, we must have the right thinking as well. So we need to be strong in our Sikhi, know our Etihas, keep our Naam, Simran strong, our Bani strong, and Dasambani strong as well. We're not going to get that strength except we go through Dasambani. It's a gift from our Guru. Try and read part like Chopay Sahib, Chandi Chitra, or if you can, Chandi Diwar, read that as well. Find out what Guru Gobind Singh is talking about in their battlefield. What is it like? But we also need to unite as a Pant. All of us pulling in different ways is not helping us. We need to pull together in the same way. Aam Sangat want the Pant to unite. It's the people in charge that don't want to unite. It seems like a crazy thing, but 80% of the Amritalis are not really part of any crew and they want the world to unite. But that 20%, they've got their little crews and they don't want to unite because that means they got to work with someone they don't really get along with that's the hard part unity is very important you can't change everybody to become the same you have to work together anyway even if you don't think the same even if you don't have the same exact same vichar you have to work together i'm going to give you two examples you know a basket of flowers they're all very different flowers you got some white ones they're big full lilies you got some small ones that are, that are white you got some pink ones, you got some red ones, you got some different yellow ones. They all look different. They all got different smells, they got different shapes, but together they look beautiful. If it was just one flower, it wouldn't be as beautiful as lots of different flowers. Gurbani talks about that in this Shabbat, where Mara says, you know what, if you've got a Gunaka Hoye Vasala, Vasala is like a flower, um, like a, a bouquet of different flowers, they go then get it and it smells nice. Take the flavor of that vasala 
of all the nice smells of this different qualities that we have. Every Sikh Jathe Bandi has some good qualities. They're talking about this gun and they say, Sanj kari jai, gun hai keri, chhod afgan chaliye. They go, leave the things you don't agree upon and join together those guns. They smell nice. The first example. Also, at the end of Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj, Maharaj talks about Mundavani. Mundavani has another meaning, which is a, basket, a bag of jewels. And inside that bag of jewels, there's different jewels with different colors, different shine properties, different values. All these things are lying in there, but together, it's a bag of jewels. Nothing can be taken out, nothing can be taken in. It's sealed by the Guru. In that way, imagine our Pant is one big family. There's different people in any family. They have different skills, but they come together and they work together and they're stronger for it. So in your mind, don't get yourself thinking if we were all the same, it would be fine. In your mind, think, even if we're not all the same, if we work together, we'll be stronger. Apne man banao. Mara says, Apne man nu samjavo. Teach your mind. So pandit jo man parabodhe. Parabod means to teach someone. Guru Sahib says, You want to be a real pandit? Teach your own mind. Apne man nu sikhao. Ram naam atam mein sodhi. They find Vaheguru inside themselves. If we focus inwards as a pant amongst each other to focus upon unity, we will become stronger. All of us are pulling in different ways. I want to talk about two narratives we have to also do. To free ourselves mentally, there's two narratives we have to free ourselves from. One is the Indian government narrative. That narrative is very dangerous. Firstly, uh, the Anandapur Sahib resolution was not a Khalistani document. They keep telling us that we did this, therefore they attacked us. But when it came to the attack upon Harbandar Sahib in June 1984, that was not something that we initiated. It was something they initiated. We were not the aggressors. They are the aggressors. It was an illegal attack. We can't call it Operation Blue Star. It was not a legal operation. There is no law in India that will allow that operation to go ahead. Also, November 1984 was not a riot. It was genocide. Even the Home Minister Rajnath Singh of India has accepted that. Then, one thing we have to accept and totally understand, justice will not be given to us. We will have to give it ourselves. No one's going to give us justice. You have to give justice yourself. And one more thing, the people that fought against the Indian government for Khalistan, they are freedom fighters for the Sikh nation. They're not terrorists. They're not, um, juj what we call them Jujarus, but they are not terrorists or insurgents. They're legitimate soldiers of the Sikh nation. Because the Sikh nation decided in 1986 that we want this kingdom. Therefore, if they did that, everybody who fights for that is a soldier of the Sikh nation, then they should be treated under the, uh, the laws of nations against nations and not terrorists. The other thing we have to do is not believe the British narrative. We've got a problem in this country, we keep buying the British government's narrative. Sikhs and British are so loyal to each other, best of friends since the very day where my marriage made in heaven and you know we get along so well. Let's go back and do what the British did for us. They took away the Raj of Maharaja Ranji Singh. Yeah. They wanted that jewel in their crown really badly. They took away our Raj. Then, on top of that, they just not even destroyed the Sikh empire. They tried to kill off Sikhi by converting the Sikhs. They sent so many missionaries into Punjab that the Sikhs got so worried they set up the Sikh Sabha movement. The whole Prachar Lehar was because the British were so powerful trying to convert the Sikhs. Next thing they did is control all of our Gurdwari. We had to free our Gurdwari from them in the whole Gurdwara uh, movement led. All the different Morti that happened, Nan Nankana Sahib massacre, that was all because the British were controlling our Gurdwari. Then they put on top of us a system called the SGPC, which is not our Sikh system. It depends upon voting. That is not Sikhi. There's no voting in Sikhi. Do you think the Sikhs got together and they voted Maharaj let's leave Anandpur Sahib? Guru Sahib said, oh, buddy idea. Yeah. No, it doesn't work that way. There's no voting in Sikhi. It's all about quality, not quantity of people. So, they gave us these things and they got Sikhs to adopt a pacifistic, pacifist, no prachar version of Sikhi. We look inwards only. Don't look outwards. We should be looking, as I said always, outwards to grow, get bigger. 
where we started thinking inwards. And also, it's the British that destroyed Punjab by putting a line between India and Pakistan. They took away Lahore, our political capital. They did that knowing what it would do to Sikhi. So the British are no great friends of Sikhi and they were involved in 1984 as well. The British, even the people that joined the British army to go and fight in First World War, Second World War, they didn't do that because they were, gonna, they were so looking forward to it. It was because they were kind of forced into it. Read the history. Many, many soldiers in Punjab, their families were uh, basically pushed and pushed into sending one person in that family to join the army. And they promised India independence if we joined. So many people that joined, they joined to free themselves from British rule. They didn't join because they loved Britain. And India is still being run by the British imperialistic ideas. If you look at it now, we were doing some research this week into this. If you look at the main two movements that the British did, the Indians did against us after 947, those same ideas come straight from the British. The first one is divide and rule. That's what the British did in India and that's exactly what the Indian rulers have done since 1947. Whenever the Sikhs ask for their own legitimate demands about what happened in Punjab, and Pusab resolution, instead of saying, well, they're asking for simple things, let's give them that. They said, no, these guys are anti-Hindu. Santaji is going out there doing seva of the whole Samaj and they post it as an anti-Hindu movement. Why? Because they're trying to divide and rule. Turn one group against another group and then you can go attack that one group and this group will support you. Then later on you can do the same thing with the Kashmiris, the Manipuris, the Tamils. It's the same thing all over India. Just a new face, same philosophy, divide and rule. And who is getting suppressed? The common Indians. Now one thing further, not just divide and rule. You know what they say in the British government? They say, don't give an inch, they'll take a mile. That's a, in, that's a British government philosophy. You know, recently we watched a video of, of um, General Sinha. Sinha was to told to go and attack upon Harmandir Sahib. He said, hold on, they're asking for the Anandpur Sahib resolution. Some of those things in there are very simple to do. Why do we have to go attack them? Why don't we just give them a few simple little things? Like they want a train named after Amritsar. They want to have a radio transmitter so they can list the Kirtan. Little, little things. Why don't we give them those things that are simple and easy to do? Maybe get rid of alcohol from Amritsar. And the government guy who was talking to Sinha, who's in the army, that he said, if we give them a little bit now, what will they ask for later on? But look, there's no negotiation. The British were like that. No negotiation. They felt that any kind of negotiation showed that you're weak. But actually, that's not the Indian way. The Indian way has always been of negotiation, of working together. So these philosophies are British philosophies. And they're permeated into the Indian government. This is not our way. This is not the, the, what you might call the Tarmic way. So, my Bainti, I'm going to finish off here because my Bainti is My Bainti to us, become strong in your Sikhi, learn more Bani, understand your Itihas and work out what happened to your nation. And then join together to make a new nation. That is our Hukam, both from our Guru and also from the Khalsa Panth in 1986 and also in the last year in November. Sarbat Khasa 2015, which said that the Sikh Pant supports the resolution of 1986, which basically says that we must have our own independent state. So all of us, the only way we can do that, like I said, is through Sikhi. We're going to do it outside Sikhi. So Sikhi which Ao, there's a lot in Sikhi. Bring people to the Katha if you can. First thing, let's get them into Sikhi. And then we can teach them more about the Itihas. And you can learn about the history on our YouTube channel, like I said, there's a whole YouTube videos on the entire history of 1984 and also the history of Sikhi from two 500 years ago. So educate yourself. Don't just sit in the background and think, patani koi na rando. Take steps to get educated and you realize how great our itihas is. Sikhi is sabto uchi and sabto suchi. Put that in your mind, put it in your kid's mind and you will find out that it is true. Sabto uchi. Sabato Suchi. Punan Chukandi Kema. Gajwizi Fatiha Koji. Wahi Guruji Ka Khalsa. Wahi Guruji Ki Fatiha.